So now we'll discuss the NMS algorithm for filtering out the false positive H points from the output of the Sobel operator. So the first step in the in the in the NMS algorithm is to round the gradient orientations in four different directions. So we take the orientation image theta i j or theta p where p is a pixel coordinate and we round uh, the orientation at each of the pixels to the uh, nearest 45 degree orientation. So we uh, discretize the gradient. So we discretize the gradient's orientation in four different orientations, zero degree, 45 degree, ninety degree, and one thirty five degree. So these four directions effectively cover all the eight direction. So to perform this discretization, we set so the resultant orientation of the pixels, uh, the, the resulting orientation of the gradient at every pixel location p, we denoted by theta d the, to denote the discretized orientation. At pixel coordinate p is set to 0 if the original uh, gradient orientation is between 22.5 and negative 22.5. So we'll just write it better over here. So we set the gradient orientation to zero if the original gradient orientation is between negative two twenty negative twenty two point five to 22.5 degrees. Similarly, this orientation is set to 45 degrees if the original gradient orientation at pixel P is between 22.5 degrees and 67.5 degrees. Similarly, the resultant orientation is set to 90 degrees if the original orientation of the gradient at pixel P is between 67.5 and 90 degrees or is between 90 is between, uh, 90 degrees and 7.5. Similarly, the resultant uh, gradient orientation is set to 135 degrees if the original pixel orientation is greater than negative of 67.5 and less than negative of 22.5 degrees. Furthermore, notice that the gradient orientation uh, is uh, computed as the function a tan and the range of a tan, so we define range as R and G of A10 is negative 
pi by 2 to pi by 2. And that's why the, the resultant, uh, the original uh, orientations we are going to get from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. And that's why we have defined the discretization steps taking the output of the a time function into account. So we can just as well use a time 2 function for example uh, in typical uh, libraries or, or in typical implementation we can just as well use a time 2 function to convert that negative pi by 2 to pi by 2 to 0 to 360 degree where we get the quadrant information as well but in that case just the conversion rule will just become longer because there are several other orientations as well that we have to take into account as compared to uh, the uh, negative pi by 2 to pi by 2 range but ultimately we just discretize the gradient orientation in 0, 45, 90 and 135 degrees. So after performing this step number 1 we get a discretized orientation uh, or a discretized orientation image or a discretized orientation for each of the pixel coordinates p in the image. So this is step number 3a and now in step 3b the edge strength which is given by the magnitude image or the magnitude of the of the gradient at each of the pixel coordinates p. So the edge strength is compared to the neighboring pixels in the positive and negative gradient direction. So for example, we have a pixel now in 0 degree direction. So we are going to compare it to the, so let's suppose the coordinate is i comma j. So we'll compare this edge strength to the pixel i comma j plus 1 and i comma j minus 1. Similarly, for 45 degree directions, this coordinate is going to be i minus 1, j plus 1 and this one i plus 1, j minus 1. Similarly, in the vertical direction, we will have i minus 1 comma j and here we will have i plus 1 comma j and similarly in the 135 degree uh, direction we will have i minus 1 j minus 1 and here we will have i plus 1 j plus 1. So in each of the four directions we compare the edge strength the magnitude of the gradient at pixel coordinate i comma j to the neighboring pixels in each of the directions. So we'll have four such comparison, one for this direction, one for this direction, one for this direction, and one for this direction. So if in any of the directions, if the edge strength or the magnitude of the gradient at i comma j is larger than the neighbors, then this point passes the non-maximal suppression test. So this pixel coordinate is set to binary 1. For example, if we are uh, computing a binary resultant output, so we can set to 255, five. that is true, or we can just leave it to its original value. And if it doesn't survive this step, for example, if it is not maximum in either of the direction as compared to its neighbors, then we set the magnitude of the gradient at that point to 0. So we get a new magnitude image after th performing 3b. We get a new magnitude image, we will denote it as m nu, where at each of the pixel coordinate i comma j or pixel coordinate p the value of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the value of the gradient magnitude is set to original value if the pixel survived the non maximum suppression step and is suppressed to zero 
if it doesn't survive the NMS step, step 3b. That means it is not maximum as compared to its neighbors in any of the directions. So if in at least one direction the, uh, the, the, the edge strength is larger as compared to neighbors, the point is preserved otherwise it is deleted. So this covers the NMS algorithm or the non-maximal suppression algorithm in the context of uh, filtering out the false positive edge points. And now we will uh, discuss two additional steps in the Kenny edge uh, detection algorithm. The two additional steps, step number four is double thresholding. And the final step is edge tracking. Via hysteresis. So next we'll discuss these two steps and that will cover the Kenny edge detection algorithm.